Hey guys, it's Adrian R VHA here bringing you a new video. Uh, now this is an updated video. This is going to be no red in Docker. Now I've done a video, like I said, on this in the past. Uh, basically it was pretty minimal, just installed node red in Docker and that was it. For this video, I really want to get into some further details and install node red in Docker, uh, which we already have home assistant in Docker. I'm going to link those two together and we're even going to set up an automation for Home Assistant and kind of show you how all that works. So I think that'll be pretty cool. So again, we'll be using Node-RED uh, in Docker. And of course I use Docker Compose for that. So I haven't done that in previous videos. So this will be a full new setup for that as well. This is a pretty lengthy video. So we're gonna to try to keep it uh, uh, contained uh, to a, a small amount as much as we can. But I do wanna make sure that I cover everything so that you guys can get this set up. I've seen a lot of other videos for Node-RED and Docker and all of them are using Has.io and the Has.io add-on. So I feel like this is one that uh, needs to be put together so that you guys that are running Home Assistant in Docker, like me, uh, can get it set up uh, with Node-RED and be able to uh, set up your automations. So let's do a quick run through of everything we're gonna cover in this video. So of course, for starters, we're gonna create a config directory for Node-RED. We'll add it as a volume in Docker Compose, and it will be there if we ever need to make any changes outside of the Docker container, as well as if we have to uh, delete the Docker container for any reason, uh, we'll be able to add it back and point it right back at our existing Node-RED setup. Once we do that, we'll install Node-RED in Docker using Docker Compose. Um, once that's done, then we're going to uh, configure Node-RED there's a lot of different things that you can do as far as configuration goes. I'm going to walk through the things that I did for my setup. Once that's done, then we'll configure Node-RED in Home Assistant. Uh, there's a few things there that we can do, a companion add-on and everything like that. We'll go through all that as well. Once we do that, we're going to set up an automation uh, in Node-RED for Home Assistant. And then uh, lastly, I'll show you what that looks like in action. So let's get started. So again, like I said, for starters, we're going to create a config directory uh, that we'll use to hold all of our Node-RED configuration files. Now I put all mine in my home directory on my uh, Docker host machine. So in my home directory, as you can see here, there's some of my other configuration directories for other containers that I have. Uh, we're going to create one here, so we'll do mkdir node-red. This will be our node-red config directory here. Once we have that done, we are ready to move on to the next step. All right, so now we are going to install node-red in Docker using Docker Compose. So of course, we'll edit our docker compose.yaml file here. We're going to find an open spot down towards the bottom. I'm going to carve out a little section for Node-RED here. Of course, I'm going to call it Node-RED, and the container name will also be Node-RED as well. Uh, for the ports, there's only one port that you need uh, for Node-RED by default, and that is 1880. Uh, so here we're going to list that out, 1880 colon 1880. We'll set the restart to uh, always. And then, of course, uh, for the volumes, we're going to add in that volume or directory that we just set up. Uh, so this will be slash home slash Adrian slash node dash red colon slash data. For the image, it's going to be node red slash node dash red. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and save it. And then we're going to do a sudo docker dash compose up dash D to complete the install. We'll kind of fast forward through that. Once that's done, we're going to jump over to Portainer to take a look at that. Uh, we'll click on the container here for Node-RED. As you can see here, everything looks pretty good. Uh, everything is set up correctly. Uh, there's the volume that we added. Let's go ahead and check the logs. And as you can see here, everything looks to be running there good as well. So I think we are good to go. Let's go ahead and move on to the next step.
All right, so now we are ready to do a, whatever configuration we need to do for Node-RED. In order for Node-RED to work with Home Assistant, we need to add in a special palette for that. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll hit the menu up here at the top. We'll click on Installs here, and then we'll do a search for Home Assistant or Home Dash Assistant. And you're looking for the WebSocket. Go ahead and click on that, and uh, we'll go ahead and install. We'll kind of fast forward that. It takes it just a minute or two to install. It uh, shouldn't be too long. Once that's done installing, you can close that out and look at the side over here and scroll down towards the bottom. You'll see all of the uh, new things that have been added uh, for that Home Assistant palette. Next thing we need to do is jump back over to Home Assistant and our web interface. We're going to create a long-lived access token uh, to use with Node-RED. That way we'll be able to connect them up together and everything will work good that way. So I'm going to click on my user account here, scroll down towards the bottom where the section is for long-lived access tokens. And then we're going to uh, click on create a token. From there, you give it a name. I'm going to call this one Node Red. Then I can uh, highlight that token, save it. We're going to use it later on in the setup. All right, so now we're back over at Node Red. I'm not sure the correct way to set this up. Uh, the way I did it was I went down to the Home Assistant palette here, and I drug one of these over, double clicked on it, uh, next to where it says server, there's an option to edit, which gives you the ability to add in all of your Home Assistant information. That way you can connect them together. There's a place to paste in my access token. Again, you're also going to put in the URL of your Home Assistant setup. So for me, mine is 10.10.10.28, uh, colon 8123, of course. Once we have all that in there, we can go ahead and hit done. At that point, you can delete what you added to the flow and then go ahead and hit deploy so that it will save all of that information in uh, Node-RED. From there, we're gonna go ahead and jump over to Portainer and we're just gonna reboot the Node-RED container just to make sure uh, that it does pull in the correct information and everything is working properly. And as you can see here by looking at the logs, it now shows that it is connected to Home Assistant on the URL that I gave it, 10.10.10.28. So we are good to go. Once all that's done, I think we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, for this section, we are going to uh, do some configuration on Home Assistant side uh, for Node-RED. So these are probably uh, things that you don't necessarily have to do, but things that I did for my setup, and I thought it would be worth uh, mentioning in case you guys wanted to give these a shot as well. So in Hacks, or the uh, Home Assistant Community Store, there is an integration for Node-RED, some sort of companion integration that you can add. I'm not 100% sure what all it does yet, but I thought I'd go through the setup of adding it since we're uh, starting fresh with a clean Node-RED install. Uh, so we'll hit the plus down at the bottom here, do a search for Node-RED, click on the integration, and then you're going to install the repository. Uh, once it's done installing, then you need to restart Home Assistant uh, for the changes to take effect. We'll click on Restart, give that a second to come back up. The second part of this install is you need to go uh, to your integration section in Home Assistant, and we're going to add the Node-RED integration there. So again, we'll have the plus down at the bottom. We're going to do a search for Node-RED again. Once you click on it, it should add right up, and you are good to go. All right, for the second part of this Home Assistant uh, configuration, I'm gonna add in a panel iframe for Node-RED so that it'll show up on the side menu there in Home Assistant. It just makes it nice to have everything all together so I don't have to go click on a bunch of different links to get to the pages that I want. Everything will be right there in my side menu. So I'm gonna edit my panel uh, iframe.yaml file here, find an open spot down at the bottom. We'll call this one Node-RED for the title. I'm gonna say Node-RED as well. We'll put in the uh, URL here, which is uh, http colon slash slash 10.10.10.28 colon 1880. And then for the icon, uh, I'm going to add in an actual node red icon. So I have the simple icons, a custom component integration added into Home Assistant as well, uh, which gives me a whole bunch of other brand icons that you don't necessarily get with the uh, MDI icons. Uh, so if you haven't done that, check out that integration as well. Also, if you have any problems or questions getting that set up, let me know. I can certainly uh, walk you through setting that up also. But here we go. We'll do a SI for simple icons, colon node-red, and this should add in the node-red icon. 
Once we have all that done, we're going to go ahead and save it. We'll jump back over to the web interface here. We're going to restart Home Assistant one more time for these changes to take effect. We'll go ahead and do a check config just to make sure everything looks good. And we'll give this a few minutes uh, to restart. All right, so now that it's back up, as you can see on the side, I now have an option for Node Red. And there is the Node Red icon as well, so everything looks good and clean. Click on that, and of course, now we have access to Node Red straight from Home Assistant. So, pretty cool. Once all that's done, we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, so uh, here we are uh, in Node Red from within Home Assistant, of course. Uh, we're going to create our first automation. So, I've labeled my flow here at the top for lights. Uh, this gives me the ability to add all of my light automations here under the same flow if I want. Uh, it's just another way to kind of group everything together, I think. Uh, what I wanted to set up here in Node Red is that I have a door window sensor on my attic door. And basically, what happens is every time that the attic door is open, uh, I have two smart lights in the attic as well. And every time that door is open, those lights automatically come on. Basically, once the door is closed, the lights will then turn back off. So I'm going to create an automation in Node Red here that will basically say if that sensor uh, comes on or is open, then it will turn on the lights. And then again, once the uh, door is closed or that sensor is closed, then the lights will turn back off. So we're going to add an event state node here. And for the event state node, we'll double click on it once we get that added. I'm going to call mine attic door contact because that's basically what it's called in Home Assistant. For the entity ID, it's going to be binary underscore sensor. And as you can see here, since we have Home Assistant connected and everything working properly, it will actually auto-complete uh, from uh, the existing list of binary sensors I have in Home Assistant. Once you have that in there, that's all we need. We can hit done. The next node we need to add is a switch node. Now, that's not part of the Home Assistant node, so you're going to have to scroll back up to look for that one. Uh, but we'll add switch there. And then we're going to drag a line between the two of them to connect them together. Uh, for the name, you can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call mine open-closed just to signify what the switch is going to monitor. Now, as far as a binary sensor goes, uh, you don't actually have the states as being open and closed. It's usually on and off. So you're going to have two states listed here, one for on and one for off. And if you kind of hover over these over here, you can tell... Um, there's one for on at the top and off is at the bottom. Next thing we need to do is go back to the Home Assistant palette down towards the bottom and look for the call service node. We're gonna add one of these here. Uh, we're gonna draw a line between the on of our switch to the uh, first call service node that we've added. Uh, for the name, I'm gonna say Attic Lights On. For the domain, I'm going to say uh, light because that's the uh, type of domain it is in Home Assistant. Now for the service, since we chose light, as you can see, you have your option for toggle, turn on, and turn off. Now for this one, I'm going to say turn on because that's what I want it to do. And then for the entity ID, I'm going to say lights.attic underscore lights. That's the name of my uh, entity in Home Assistant. Once we have that there, we can go ahead and hit done. And then we're going to do the same thing again for turning off the attic lights. We'll add a second call service node here. And then again, I'm going to call this one kind of similar to the other one. It'll be attic lights off. Uh, the domain, of course, will be lights again. Uh, for the service, this time it's going to be turn off. And then, of course, the entity ID will be light.attic underscore lights. Go ahead and hit done again. We'll draw a line to connect it to the off uh, part of the switch. And as you can see here, you can move everything around, set it up the way you want it to. Once you have it the way you want, uh, go ahead and hit deploy in the top corner up there. And as you can see, it says successfully deployed. It also lists running underneath the uh, attic door contact uh, event node that we have there just to show that that is currently in uh, and running state. But that's pretty much it for setting up our automation. Once you have all that done, we're ready to move on to the last step and see this thing in action. All right, so uh, here is uh, my attic door. 
It's got the little sensor there that monitors, uh, you know, whether it's open or closed. And if I just pull the string down for the attic door, you can see the lights uh, come on automatically. So this was all handled from within Node Red and Home Assistant. Pretty cool. So uh, we've set up our first automation in Node Red. Everything looks good. That's the end of the video, guys. Uh, we went through and set everything up and got it all working and communicating with Home Assistant, and it went pretty smooth, I think. Let's do a quick run through of everything we covered in this video. So, of course, for starters, uh, we created our config directory for Node Red. Once we did that, we installed Node Red in Docker. Uh, once we got it installed, then of course we did some configuration from within Node Red. Uh, once we got all that set up the way we wanted it to, we did some configuration in Home Assistant for Node Red. Uh, once all that was done, we created our first automation uh, for Home Assistant. And lastly, I showed you what that looked like in action. Again, that's the end of the video, guys. This was kind of a lengthy video, but I felt like it uh, wasn't too bad. If you haven't played around with Node Red at all, it's definitely worth checking out. If nothing else, uh, something else for you to play around with. I really like Node Red's setup. I'm just not sure that I want to maintain uh, automations in both. So I feel like I will need to either go all in one direction or all in the other direction. So not all the way there yet, still playing around with it. So we'll see how that goes. As always, thank you to everyone that has donated to my Buy Me A Coffee link. Every little bit helps. Also, if you haven't checked out the Teespring merchandise page yet, definitely check it out. Uh, see if anything interests you in the Burns Home Automation merchandise. As always, if you like the video, please subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comments below. As always, if there are any videos out there that you would like to see that I don't already have out there, let me know in the comments as well, and I'll see if I can't get something put together for you guys. Otherwise, I'll see you guys around. Thanks.